thank you everybody for coming this evening to be here for this launch of the Selling the Military uh, report carried out by Forces Watch and MEDAT. We're delighted to be launching this report and to have three guest speakers here this evening. They're advertising financial security, they're advertising companionship, wellness, prosperity. The military advertising campaigns really emphasise this idea of camaraderie and belonging and that's problematic because it really taps into and exploits this really critical period of development in adolescent brains. Now, teenagers are desperate to belong. They want to belong to their peer group and they want to belong to society more generally and so they're really keen to prove themselves to older adults. Now, these advertising campaigns promise this idea of being able to belong to a group, to belong to this thing that's amazing, that is the army. And also, the other thing to remember about adolescent brains, actually, is that decision-making isn't very good at this period of time. We're not very good at actually assessing the risks of things. And so, by pushing that message of belonging camaraderie in the advertising, you're not giving full information to these adolescents in any case, and you're taking advantage of the fact that their decision-making is not going to be the best. So I think this needs to be treated as a public health issue. So we know that young people when they join the military are more likely to self-harm, they're more likely to commit suicide and they're more likely to abuse alcohol. That's a huge problem for young people right now. We're facing a mental health crisis within young men, especially within our society. And these issues need to be addressed out with the realms of military recruitment. At a time of austerity, it's just not fair to be putting additional pressures on young people and to be exploiting some of them at their most vulnerable times just isn't right. We know that the UN Commission on the Rights of the Child has called out the UK's practices in targeting young people. There needs to be some question answered about, is that OK? Why is this happening in 2019 in the UK? I mean, Armed Forces marketing that focuses on self-fulfillment is problematic as far as I'm concerned because it assumes that individuals joining the Armed Forces will have a particular kind of um, positive experience. And I think if you look across the experiences of individuals, look across their backgrounds and look, look across the situations they're put into, yes, there may be some scope for, for self-fulfillment through camaraderie, etc. However, for a lot of people, it can be an extremely alienating uh, experience overall. Framing marketing of the armed forces in terms of self-fulfillment or self-actualization is problematic for two main reasons. In the first instance, it elides the violence that is performed by these armed forces in the global south. And the second reason it's of concern is that it obfuscates the violence they themselves experience in terms of PTSD, which is a big aspect of their journey as a member of the armed forces. Military recruitment and um, the kinds of people that are um, more easily persuaded or more easily persuadable to enlist is shaped by gendered race and class dynamics. So this report has revealed, for example, that um, this is belonging was targeted at C2DEs using the economic classification. Um, so it's clear that the military is um, views certain types of people as um, needing to self-improve. Um, and my argument would be that that kind of assumption is predicated upon class, race and gendered assumptions. I think there's a bit of an issue here around having recruitment campaigns which uh, still appeal to the same kind of constituencies that the armed forces have always appealed to. So you get these ones that are very much about lads and white heteronormative uh, macho kind of culture. And then alongside that the odd kind of token, tokenistic symbolic um, ad which sort of tries to reach out to someone on the grounds of one facet of their identity so um, you know it's about being a Muslim or being a woman as if those things are mutually exclusive kinds of categories when we all know, know that people are very complicated and so on and those adverts often depict the armed forces as um, rather than being somewhere that's that, that is inclusive, where people can be themselves in, in their multiple kinds of ways, as join us and belong to our particular kind of culture. Um, so assimilate, adapt, and you, can, you too can belong. Um, and actually, I think there's also issues around uh, belonging and that idea that people can easily slot into this and, and make friends for life and so on that are actually challenged by a lot of people's experiences. So uh, myself, having done extensive research with soldiers, I've often found that they experience a lot of boredom and loneliness, um, something that the report picks up on as well. Um, so this idea that everyone can just sort of come in and uh, gain access to that culture um, is something that we need to kind of challenge and that tokenistic advertising doesn't necessarily challenge that.